Hi, my name is Ben with Heirloom Roses. We hear from a lot of our customers that they want to grow climbing roses that will fill a wall with color. One of the most important things to achieving that is proper pruning and training of your climbing rose. So today we're going to go through the five simple steps of training and pruning your climber using the acronym PRUNE, P-R-U-N-E. We'll walk through each of the five steps which will break this job down into manageable sizes so that you can achieve a great looking climbing rose. Pruning a climbing rose is different than any other rose. We don't take the main canes all the way down. You'll see more about this as we get into the video. So the first step in pruning is P, prepare your plant. We're gonna go through this climbing rose and cut out anything that's really sticking out wild straight out of the plant in our way or it's just an unruly cane that we know we're not going to keep in place. So as you can see, this cane right here is, it's kind of in my way right now. It's not something I'm going to train back up onto the wall because it's sticking out too far. And so I'm just going to cut it off inside. Now, we'll make another cut on that later as we take it down. But what I'm doing here is just creating room to work and making a safe place so I don't get poked in the face with thorns. So as I get up into here, we're going to go ahead and just take this cane off and this one off. And really, we're just making room to work. This one's in my way. As you can see, it's right next to my head. And some of these spindly ones in here. OK, so again, I'm just cleaning up canes that are sticking out in the walkway here and are really in the way. And so we're not really thinking too much about cutting these off. We're just taking them out of the way so we have room to work. Okay, the second step in our prune acronym is R. Remove any dead, diseased, or crossing canes. And what we're going to do is just work our way through this plant, cleaning up any old canes that may have disease spots or splits or damage on them, any canes that are crossing and causing wear between the two, which can cause an area for problems, and just making sure that it's generally cleaned up from a health standpoint so that when we start going through and training, we know we have healthy canes to work with. So I have a cane right here that comes from the base and goes right up onto the handrail. It's one of my main canes, but the problem is it's got diseased areas right here and here, and there's some rubbing down here. It's not in a good spot. It's gonna be a problem as we go into the future, so we're gonna cut it out. So I always start climbing roses and cut from the bottom. And so we're gonna cut this right here. And because this is interspersed with other canes, I cut them into sections. I just cut this into 12 inch manageable pieces so that they come right out and are easier to work with. So as you can see, this cane right here starts at the base. It could become a main cane and go up onto the trellis, but I've got a lot of weird growth here and it's pretty woody out on the, cane, on the end. And I, I don't really like that. It's not something I wanna keep working with year over year. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off at the base here. I like to have main canes that are clean and good growth. So we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, I have one other cane and it's right here and it's on the inside. And as I go up, the, up, it's crossing with a lot of other canes and it really just needs to come all the way out so that I have a cleaner plant to work with. So again, I'm gonna start at the base where it comes out and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna cut it into smaller chunks so that it's a little easier to take out. Okay, and as we work along, I see that there's another cane right here, and this one's coming up again from the base, uh, but it's pretty woody and it's kind of interfering with some other healthier canes here. And we'll cut that, take it out in small chunks. So uh, you'll see me using long-handled pruners throughout this process. Um, I use these so I can reach back inside uh, and make cuts that are on, bigger on these so it's, I don't get poked or scratched up. And a lot of these require just a lot more force to cut off than my hand pruners will do. So you'll see me using these interspersed and they're an important tool to have in the training climbers. Now, when I talked about crossing canes, you can see I have two canes that are crossing. Um, these are two actually very important canes. One goes each direction and I'm gonna have a plan that next year I'm gonna cut this big one out. 
I'm gonna replace it with a newer, more fresh, healthy cane. But for this year, I really wanna get a lot of good blooms on this and I'm not quite ready to take it out. And this one's still crossing. So what I'm gonna do is when I tie the plant up, I'm actually gonna pull them apart so they don't cross. There's no wear inside right now and there's not a disease problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and correct that by the way I, the way I tie this up to make sure they're not rubbing. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for now. But there's one cane right here that's got several other lateral canes coming off of it. And it doesn't look like something I'm gonna to wanna to work with. It, uh, it's not gonna produce a long growth out here that I wanna work with. And so I'm actually gonna take this out again at the base, cutting it off flush. The next step is you, understand your plant. So this is an Eden climbing rose that we want to train along this handrail. And it's important on a climbing rose to have your main canes go horizontal so that they produce blooms. Down at the base of the plant, a main cane starts at the bottom and goes all the way up. That's how you determine a main cane. You can trace it all the way back to the base of the plant. So those main canes on this plant, as you can tell, go up and over. And we've trained them horizontally. By doing that, we will get blooms all the way along this main cane from all of these lateral canes that come up. Blooms all over this. And that's how you get blooms all the way across your climbing rows. If you just let them go vertical, you'll only get blooms at the top. So another part of this, understanding our plant, is that this is an own root rose. So we don't have a graft to deal with down here. And actually, I've got suckering from the base that's happening almost 12 inches away from the rest of the plant. And that's really good. We want to promote that, and we want to train that into being new main canes. So when I have this piece back here, we're gonna go ahead and, and work with this to produce more main canes that will take over some of these older ones that we'll take out in years to come. I'm gonna step back and take a look at the general structure of my plant so that I can see which direction the canes are going, which ones are healthy, and which ones need to be either, either cut out now or will be cut out in the future, and we wanna plan ahead to have another cane replace those. So I have this really healthy cane that's coming up from the base and it's at least 12 feet tall. Um, it didn't get trained and pruned late last summer, and it's all the way up to the gutter on the house here. So I'm gonna utilize that, and I'm gonna train it horizontally along here so that I have a new replacement cane. So let me talk about zip ties a little bit. I really like using zip ties when I'm training my roses. They're really easy to work with. They provide a really sturdy way to anchor the rose onto the trellis or the handrail and they can be cut clean and just have a nice look to them and they're pretty inexpensive. So um, a great place to get zip ties is Ace Hardware in their electrical section um, and I always use zip ties that are at least 12 inches long. If you use too short of zip ties you can be tempted to cinch them up too tight to make them work and they're just generally harder to work with. So use long zip ties, we'll cut the tails off so they look clean and the price is about the same as the short ones. So another part of you is understanding your plant. We talked about the main canes being horizontal. Let's talk about the lateral canes. These lateral canes are what come off of the main cane and we want those all to be going up. If they're going out, they're gonna wanna turn and go up. And if they're going down, they're gonna wanna turn and go up. It's just their natural growth habit. So. If they're, go if they're going out or down, we're gonna just take those all the way off because it looks funny and they tend to flop out and be in the way. They don't necessarily add to the growth and the bloom of the plant. They're just annoying. So we're gonna go right through this cane and we're just gonna take off the, the, the laterals that are going straight out or down. And you can see as we do this, we're going in small steps that are very purposeful and the plant is getting much more manageable and easy to work with. So that's one cane. We're gonna go through this next one. As you can see, this is sticking straight out. I'm gonna cut that off. This one's going down. We're gonna cut that off. Okay, now I'm taking a lot of canes off of here, and I think you might be concerned that 
By doing this, I'm not gonna get any blooms this year. I'm really taking too much out of the plant. This plant, when it comes out of dormancy and starts to grow, is gonna put on full growth off of each of these lateral canes that are going vertical. And it's going to have full blooms on all of it. Okay, so on this side of the rows, I have four canes that I'm gonna work with. This new one that went really vertical, I'm gonna train that horizontally. And these other three that were trained horizontally that we're gonna reposition. So I'm gonna go now, go along and start pruning all of these laterals. And when I prune these laterals, I'm gonna look for a bud eye, one here and one here, and I'm gonna prune right above the second bud eye. What that does is I'm gonna have branching that comes off of here this year and that branching and those canes that come off will produce blooms. And so by do, doing all of this cutting, we're gonna get two more canes off of each one of these and double the amount of blooms. And I'm doing all of this before this gets tied onto the trellis or to the handrail here. Okay, now as you can see, I've got four canes here all that are very trimmed back and ready to be tied on and trained into place. So this main cane is something that is almost wild. It's gone clear up from the base, 12 feet tall, and we're gonna train it on to the trellis now. It's gonna be the first one I work with because I wanna have room to really get it twisted into shape and put along here in a horizontal manner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it and I'm gonna kind of split this, this, this uh, handrail into equal four, four part sections and I'm gonna put a zip tie right here and start getting this one held into place. I put my zip ties on and I put them on a little bit loose, just enough to hold the cane into place. If you put them on too tight, they can cut in. So that is a downside to zip ties, but I, I found that it's, it hasn't been a major problem for me. And I'm gonna put another one in right here and you can see this cane wants to kind of jump around a little bit. So, we'll just... So I put those on firm enough to hold it in place, but not so firm that it can't wiggle a little bit and grow. And then I go ahead and cut the tails off. That's a pretty nice clean look. Now this cane was at the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and move it up more and reposition it so that it's higher on the handrail. The effect will be I'll actually get blooms that will go up over the handrail and I think that'll look really nice. So we finished off the right-hand side of this plant. I'll take care of the left-hand side later. But for now, let's move on to our next step, which is N, nothing left behind. We want to clean up any type of debris that we've left behind, any clippings that we've left behind, and any leaves that are full of black spot or other things that may have occurred over the winter. What it does is it gets us a good clean plant to start off and have a fresh start to the spring. So I'm actually going to go through here and take off all the foliage um, and defoliate this. It's, it's all going to grow back really quickly this spring and it gets all of these kind of weak spent leaves off the plant and gives us a better start to our spring flush. Just clean bare cane. I'm also going to pick up anything left on the ground and rake it all out so that we have a really clean pristine growing environment. So that leads us to our final step E. Enjoy your rows all summer long. We're back for an update on this Eden climbing rose. It's been about two months since we pruned this. Uh, before when we pruned, it was dormant and cold, and we really got after this pretty hard. If you'll remember, we took cuttings off of all of these lateral branches coming up, and we said they would branch out, and lo and behold, they have. So what's exciting about this is we've got branching off of this lateral, but we also have branching along the main cane here, all up and down. And all of this is gonna represent more blooms throughout the whole plant as we get into spring. So check back when we have blooms and you'll be amazed. It's gonna be a great wall of color.
Okay, we're back. It's early June and we're enjoying the fruits of all of the pruning that we did early this spring when it was cold. And now we have blooms all over this Eden Rose. To search for and fall in love with your next own root rose, visit us at heirloomroses.com.